Good morning, friends. It's nice that we can spend a little bit time together again and have a worship, whether we are in Norway, where I am, or we are in Australia, where maybe some of you will hear is, or other parts of the world. It's like we can, I can kind of invite you into my little room here and just spend some time together, which is really precious. So before we start, we'll do as we used to do. We'll have a little prayer together and I'll pray for you too. <laughs> Not sure who will all listen to this, but God knows. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for another beautiful day of spring here in Norway. I don't see much of the sun, but I know it's supposed to come later on today. And it's such a beautiful thing, Lord, to see uh, nature spring into life again. And I thank you so much for what you can also do in our lives by your Holy Spirit and by being the son of righteousness. And I pray for all my friends who's going to listen to this worship that you will be with them in a special way. You know the needs of each one and of their families. And I pray that you'll come close to them to you today, uh, close to them today. And that you will also bless these beautiful words that we are going to read from the Gospel of John and that you will give us right and good thoughts about it by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So, if you want to follow me in your own Bible, you can turn to John chapter 10, and it is a beautiful chapter, I can assure you that. It's actually quite one of the quite famous chapters in the Gospel of John, where Jesus is presenting himself as the Good Shepherd. So we'll just uh, throw ourselves right into the text and start from verse 1. Jesus says, and this is before he actually presents himself as the good shepherd. He presents himself as, yeah, you can see he's a good shepherd, but, but he also presents himself as something else. So, so we'll try to get both of the pictures that he's trying to give us. Verily, verily, I say unto you. And in my Bible, this is in red, so that means it's Jesus' own word speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheep sheepfold is a thief. Sorry, I skipped one line. I'll start over again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entered by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Okay, we might get back to that a little bit as we go, but you can maybe picture the picture here. I imagine that back in those days, the sheep was inside folds. Maybe sometimes they were hoses. Maybe sometimes it was just a high, you know, stone wall with a gate and you could let all the sheep in. And I've heard that the, the shepherd actually would sleep at the gate. So if a thief should go into the sheep, he would actually have to go through the shepherd. And it's interesting that it says here that if you go in anywhere else than through the door, you are a robber and you're not really seeking the good of the sheep. And as we keep moving in these verses, we will see this picture maybe more clear because who is the door and what is this all about? But we will leave that a little bit for now, but just keep this picture in mind. All these sheep inside a stone, like a kind of stone fence with a gate and there the shepherd sleeps. So no one can get in unless they go through him. To him, the one who goes through the, through the door, the porter open it and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he put his forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This is another beautiful picture, because why is the sheep following one man and not the other? Why are they following the good shepherd and not a stranger? Well, it says here that it is because they know the voice of the shepherd. And my question is then, why do they know the voice of the shepherd so they can discern his voice from all the other voices? Well, that's pretty plain. They've grown up with him. They've spent time with him. 
They've been around him. They have seen that he is to be trusted. He has been the one walking before them, facing the dangers before them. Uh, he has plucked away maybe the bad herbs that could uh, cause them trouble. He has maybe dammed up the water so it was easier for them to drink. They've followed him. They have seen him. They have got acquainted with him. And when he speaks, they know his voice. I don't know how much sheep know about the words we are saying, but definitely they can recognize the t tone of the voice of their owner. And seeing that Jesus is the good shepherd, this may makes it very interesting for us as his sheep, because I hope you want to be one of his sheep and be in his fold. That's at least my desire. So if we, we are living in a world with heaps of de deceptions, right? so many religions, so many directions, so many non-religious streams as well that is kind of trying to pull us into materialism or or whatever else, you know? And how can we discern what is the voice of Jesus? How can we know when questions comes up in, even in our own churches about right and wrong in certain cases, how can we know what side to take? Well, I guess the answer is as simple as in this story. We need to know the voice of the shepherd. And where is God voicing himself? Maybe you know. <laughs> because this book that we are holding in our hands, what is it called? It's called the Bible, but it's also called the Word of God. So in this Bible, God is actually speaking to us. He's speaking to us his words. And the reason the sheep knew the shepherd's voice was because they had spent a lot of time hearing the shepherd's voice. And if we want to escape the dangers and, you know, the deceptions that is in the world today, we need to spend time with this book. We need to spend time with the written word of God. Because as we get to know the Bible, and some people come and suggest things even in the name of Jesus, and we kind of remember, because the Holy Spirit says he can bring it back to our memory, that I read something in the Bible and what this person says, even though he seemed very godly and kind and friendly and everything, doesn't seem to match with what I read in the Bible. And so we go back to the Bible and we prove and we check things with the Word of God. And the more we spend time with that Word, the more we get to know the voice. So that the more and the more immediately, when, when someone is presenting something, it's easier for us also through the, the power of the Spirit to, to weigh it because we have been exposed to the shepherd's voice. And I think that is so important. Jesus says that we shall search the word. <laughs> and, and I think we have come to a time where we, more than ever before, needs to be acquainted with, with our faith so that it's not based just on emotion or feeling or culture or sentiments, but is actually based in the Word of God. And when we face something where we don't know, we can ask God and we can present this promise that we have in Psalms 190, 105, where it says, Your word, thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path or something like that. Let's see what it says in English. It's a beautiful verse that is worth learning by heart. I know it in Norwegian, but let's see exactly what it says in English. And by the way, if you ever want to read a psalm that is uplifting the value of the Word of God, read Psalm 119. Psalm 119 has 176 verses, and most of them is a praise to the Word of God. And Psalm 119, 105 says word by word here, not just paraphrasing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when you feel and know that you need light, when you are unsure about the direction, I think God is leading you back to actually spend time with God's word. And if you do that under prayer, you know what God has promised. He's promised something beautiful and we'll soon come to it as we study the Gospel of John. But in in John chapter 16 and verse um, 13, it says, Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Isn't that beautiful? God gives us his word and then he promised the Holy Spirit that can guide us into all truth. Maybe you don't know all truth today. I 
I, I don't because I don't know everything and you don't. But if we take in what God teaches us through his word and keep praying for the Holy Spirit to guide us, he has promised he will guide us into all truth. And the more we get familiar with the voice of the word of God, the more we will be able to discern when there are strangers that are crying something else. So I think that's a very important point. We're six in John 10. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not the things, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. That was not too uncommon. <laughs> it was often that Jesus tried to express some spiritual lessons, but the spiritual eye and ear of the listeners were so dim that he kind of had to redo it and redo it and try to come from different angles to try to get through to us. So you know what? Remember that we have a patient God. Even if you don't understand everything he tries to present to you at once, as long as you really want to understand it, he'll keep working on you. Then said Jesus unto them again, verse 7, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So not only is he the good shepherd, which voice we should know, but he is also the gate. And now this picture that we started off with makes perfect sense. And it is so beautiful. You know what? If Jesus is that shepherd, he takes us, his sheep, into his fold. And he himself is the door. He's laying there in front of that yard with all the sheep. And when an enemy come, who do they have to face first? They have to face the strong almighty Jesus. And I think this is so powerful because we have heaps of enemies in the world today. We have so many people who want to lead us astray and, and you know, uh, rob and steal and whatever it says here, rob us of our Christian experience, rob us literally for that sake. But you know, the thing is that if we have given our lives to Jesus, Nothing that faces us haven't had to face the shepherd first. And if he allows some blow to come into our lives, he will in some way be able to turn that situation into something good and, and make us stronger. Because he has promised in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So if you have given your life truly in God's hands, know that the trials you are going through today is something that he has foreseen and and he's also able to get you through it remember all the trials that met him on his way even though he was perfect holy the most high god the father also allowed things to come into his life that weren't perfect in fact he ended up dying on the cross for us but that was the victory and you don't know the things that you are facing in your life today that seem so mysterious how god through those trials can bring out something beautiful if you just cling to him so stick to that fact that he's a good shepherd. And if something hits you, it has passed through him. And it's not because he wants you evil. He's going to strengthen you through the experience that you're going through. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So what, what are we hearing here? If we want to find pasture, if we want to find a good life, if we want to find peace, there is one way. And that's what Jesus repeats in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only gate. If we want to come to heaven, he's the only one who has died for us, paid for our sins, and opened the door. So he's the only one we can go to. And you know what he wants to give us? So beautiful, the next verse. He says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You know what God wants to give us? He wants to give us an abundant life. The best life possible. And you know, I just want to tell you that there is nothing more interesting than, than uh, spending time with God and doing things together with God. And life becomes so interesting because even though we go through trials, we know that we have someone to go to. And when we get inspired to 
to do things together with God, to do life together with God, life becomes so abundant and so interesting. And before I end today, I think I'll stop here in verse 10 because I was thinking to maybe go further, but we'll do that next time so the worship won't be too long. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about yesterday because when I when I finished my day yesterday, I had so many things to be thankful for. Um, and I hope that will inspire you to want to live life with Jesus and experience things together with Jesus. Well, I decided that I should go into the biggest city here in Norway, to Oslo, to do some outreach, to reach out to people. And I brought this beautiful book, The Great Controversy, quite a few of them, close to 100 of them and a few other books. And um, I brought some food for homeless people or beggars and and some and I brought a very special blanket which some kids had made for a homeless person and it was my task by God's help to find that person who should have that special blanket as a token of love and care and so yeah even from when I before I stepped on the bus I I started to have good experiences the first lady I met she was from Ukraine and we could hardly talk to each other but through a device we were able to communicate and we had such a good talk together and became quite friendly you know and she gave me her phone number and i'm thinking to invite her to our church because um it's nice for her to come there and and there are other ukrainians there that can can talk to her and so as i came to oslo i just sat down a bit because i had this heavy suitcase and i wanted to drink a bit and thought maybe i can talk to someone while i'm sitting here and as i was drinking water this man was commenting on my drinking water and we just started up a little chat and and he said that he was from America, so I guess I couldn't have met him too many times because he often wasn't in Norway. And he was sitting there, he said, in a very special air and he was waiting for his mom. And somehow he came to tell me that his dad was in his backpack. I mean, the remains of his dad. Because his dad had died from cancer. He had taken him over to the States to help him to be cured there, but it hadn't succeeded. And and he had been cremated and he actually had remains of his dad in his backpack and he was just about to meet the mom and they were going to go to the graveyard because he, they wanted to bury him in Norway. And imagine to meet a person in such a very special circumstances and I don't think it was for nothing. And I had this beautiful book about Jesus, it's called The Desire of Ages and it was nicely wrapped in and I said, I, I think this book should be for you. And he also got one of the great controversy books so he and his mom could have one book each and i just thought it was very special that i could minister to him in that kind of situation you know and i think i also said i should pray so so for him i hope that would have been a little bit of a ray of comfort in that kind of situation and as i proceeded out to the street this was so easy to share with these books about god lots of people taking them i don't think they knew what it was about because it was a free gift but it's actually a very interesting book because they can also listen to it audio. So I told them it was a free book with, with an audio book to it. And, and, and after a while, a couple of girls, they were both 18 years old, they come, came back to me and one of them said, oh, we just want to thank you for doing this. And it showed up that she was a believer in Jesus, but her friend was a Muslim, but she was, this Muslim friend was very positive to the Christian faith and very friendly. And they had just been talking about religion that day and they were really interested in talking about religion. And so they found it special to get his book and they came back and we had quite a interesting talk together and, and exchanged contact details and maybe we'll meet up sometime and, and um, pray together. And it was so, such an encouragement for me to meet two 18 year olds, one a Christian and one a Muslim who was so reflective and we had such a good talk. And there's more details to it that I could tell, but I think I'll, I'll leave that out for now. And um, later I met another man who was quite interesting in hearing more uh, and yeah, got his details so that he can join something we have called Bible Zoom if he wants to. And, and then after I'd shared pretty much all my books, I wanted to find a guy that could have this or a, a woman or a man who could enjoy this special blanket that, that the kids have made that I, I uh, have at my children club. And on the way to find that man, I got to talk a, to a lovely Christian lady who tried to help me to find someone. We got to pray together. We became friends on Facebook. She got a book from me as well. And, um, 
and and I finally found the man who got the blanket. He was a man on drugs, and he even left a very sweet video message to the kids who had made it. And you can imagine I went home that evening with a big smile on my face. You know, there is hardly anything in the world that is more interesting than, than, than doing missionary work. And I truly believe that when God calls us to be his missionaries, he is calling us to an abundant life. He's calling us to a very much fun and interesting time, you know. And um, yeah, I just want to recommend to decide to live an abundant life. And it's so beautiful as we close to kind of remember these couple of pictures that Jesus is the door into the sheep. Nothing that faces you if you have accepted Jesus hasn't been passed through him. And if it's if it's come your way, he can turn it around and make it a blessing. Somehow, some way, even if you don't understand it. It doesn't mean that what came was good in itself, but he can turn it around. Second thing, he's a good shepherd that will take care of you and guide you. It says that the sheep follow after him. And the way we can follow after him is to get familiar with his voice. So we need to spend time with God so that we can discern God's voice from all the other voices. And as we follow God, life will become very interesting. So that was some of the thoughts I wanted to share with you today. And um, let's close up with a little prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your love and care. And I thank you so much for... Um, showing me how interesting interesting it is to do missionary work and and I just pray that you'll help me into a closer and closer relationship to you so that I can have more and more of that bonds that you are offering and um, I pray for my friends that you will inspire them to see how you can use them in their everyday life and thank you that as we spend time with your word we will be more familiar with your voice and and we need that, Lord, in, in this world full of deceptions. We also need to know that we have a, a shepherd who also in, is the door into the fold. And that there is nothing that meets us when we have put our lives in your hands that, that you can't turn into a blessing some way, somehow. And I thank you, Lord, for being the one you are. And I pray that you will help us to be more and more acquainted with you and, and to follow you more and more closely. And I thank you and I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining me and I hope you'll have a great day. God bless.